today's episode of What Would Jeff Do? I'm going to be visiting Adam in Burlington. Now, Adam is going to be in undertaking a project to remove the center wall of his house, which is a structural load-bearing wall from the pictures that he sent to me. It kind of makes it a little obvious to understand whenever you got a two-story home, you're going to have that. But he's looking for a strategy that he can get that wall out of there and open up the living space. So we're going to have a visit and find out what his options are and what I would do if I was him. Cheers, Hello. Adam. Good How to you see doing? you. Good, man. All right, we're going to come on inside. Sure, yeah. Come on in. So, Adam, what is the age of the house? Um, we believe it was built around 2001. Really? Yeah. So, oh, just okay. around 20 years old, 19, 20 years old. So, the whole neighborhood, is it roughly the same or is it kind of an extension off of an 80s, 90s neighborhood? Uh, as far as we know, this whole area is more or less 20 years old. Wow, because right we around. drove in and it was like with the facade of all the buildings. I just said, wow, this kind of looks like late 80s, early 90s. Uh, but well, you know what? Red yeah. brick never goes out of style, eh? Yeah, well, we like it. It, it caught our eye when we uh, were house hunting, so... Okay, and so you, we we're, we have a, a wife... Fiancé. Fiancé. She's at work today, unfortunately. Any so. kids? No? Uh, no kids yet. All right. Uh, all in the plan. For... So this is all part of the house first, then wedding. Yes, sir. Then the children. So the wedding's booked for uh, February. Oh, congrats. Assuming all things go well, thank you. Yes, as long and, as you don't get kicked uh, out between now and then, you're exactly. good. Exactly. Eh? All right. So... Uh, Okay, well, yeah, let's, let's come in and take a look. In. Wow, you know what? Yeah, that is just screaming, right? It is. It's uh, not the prettiest of things to look at, but... Okay, so Adam, this is obviously the wall that you sent me in the picture. Yep. And when I'm, from where I'm standing, it's like dead center of the house. Yes, sir. You got lots of natural light everywhere, and yet the house is dark. Yeah, if the lights weren't <laughs> on, it's uh, certainly uh, darker in here than we'd like. Right. Um, so we're here to talk about specifically this wall. Yes, sir. How do we get rid of that? How do we get rid of it? And what are the consequences of getting rid of that wall? Yes. So are you aware of the scope of the project that's going to happen? Uh, yeah, I've tried to educate myself as much as I could. We're dealing so with mechanical. Because mechanical. I'm looking at your house, I'm like, all your heat runs to the second floor are in here. Your plumbing for the bathrooms are probably in your bulkheads. Yep. In the back corner of the room, so that won't be an issue. Um, so what we've determined is the plumbing for the second floor actually does come up through this wall somewhere in this area. The drain or the water supply? The water supply. Okay. And then it likely tees off somewhere around here. Okay. Um, one of the bathrooms is right there. The other one, there's a hole in the ceiling. Yep. So that sort of... It was kind of a dead giveaway to Dead me. giveaway at that point, <laughs> yeah. We had a leak there, so All we're right. sort of wrapping up one renovation and planning this one. Okay, so if we were to remove this wall, first of all, it's a two-story home? Two-story home. So it's a structural issue. Yes. We need to put in point loads at both ends, right? So you're going to have a post, or we need to bring the point load all the way over to this wall. Right. This is your garage wall. Yes. So that's on a foundation. Right. That's easy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but the wall way over there, that's way far away. Yes, sir. So we need, we need to get that engineered in steel. Okay. Because your chances of getting a laminated veneer lumber that that long to carry a second floor load are slim to none unless it is like this thick. Okay. Probably not ideal. Not for ideal, what we'd right? Like. <laughs> now, do you have a design idea in mind for your future kitchen? Um, we've toyed around with things a little bit, you know, used IKEA planners just to sort of sure, map sure. things out. Um, the plan is to have a big island, which, you know, sort of center of, you know, what would be the open space. Yep, yep. Um, you know, leave the dining room sort of where it is. You know, we like where the fireplace is. Um, so if there are people over, the TV is good sight line. Um, yeah, and this little interior wall here, are you going to open that space up as well and redesign the whole kitchen? Um, that wall, I guess, we haven't really given too much thought into. Okay. Um, same with this one here. Yep. Um, so your biggest issue is your ductwork. The ductwork, yep. We know there's the cold air returns for two of the rooms upstairs. Okay. Um, the plumbing. Yeah. And at least one of the heat runs goes up into one of the upstairs rooms. Right. So those are the big things. Uh, otherwise, you know, just the electrical, which that's, is that's probably never the concern. least of, you can least of our worries. Electrical. Yes. All right, and your drywall is attached right to the bottom of your floor joist, so you do not have a cavity to fish wiring through. No. Okay, so that's the other concern. When you're designing this, because you're like early phase, yep. 
have you thought of the idea of designing an island with a couple of posts at each end? We have. Because um, from a cost perspective, flexibility, right? Yeah. That just takes all of your problems and puts them in the, into those two posts. Yeah, it definitely was a consideration. Not something we would prefer. Okay. Um, but we know we're limited in how many walls we have to put mechanical plumbing sure. that aren't outside walls. Yes. So yes, that's definitely. our challenge is how do we open it up as much as we can and still you know, keep the function of the second floor Okay, intact. so then let me, let, me, let me ask this question. We'll go through the from a thought process as a contractor. Sure. All right. Um, what's the most important aspect here? Is it the design or the cost? And, and where do those two lines intersect where it becomes a, a problem? Right? Yeah. Everybody well, has, a, have, has a spot. Yeah, for sure. Um, we have gotten quotes um, previously from contractors, so we have a ballpark idea of how much it would cost should we hire someone. Okay. Um, and are they quoting on the whole renovation project or just the removal of the wall? So we actually did two. The first one was just the structural, remove yep. the wall, nothing else, no electrical, HVAC, mechanical, nothing. Okay. And then the other one was sort of, let's gut everything right down on the subfloor, open yeah, yeah. up wherever we need. And, and that's good because then you know the total cost versus valuation. Are there other people in the neighborhood who've done this type of work? Uh, not that we are aware of. Okay. Um, the neighbors on either side entertain the idea, but I think uh, cost is the biggest factor. Yep. Um, you know, yep. you watch most of the reno shows, 100,000, 150,000 for a main floor reno. But literally, it can be that much. All right. I'm going to suggest that if you wanted to find a happy blend and use that wall as an island wall and to cut out a huge picture window into it, so you get the open concept feel with the ability to run mechanical, with the ability to have point load, point load, point load, point load. You can reduce your cost and bring all that back into something a lot more reasonable. Then all you've got to do is redesign your kitchen with your fridge on a different wall. Right. Right. So instead of 150, I'll just throw this at you so that you can kind of steer the conversation. If you went with four point loads and a half wall, because you want to maintain that size of the living space anyway. Now you're moving into a place where you can probably bring your whole kitchen reno if you do some DIY work, build your own IKEA kitchen, that sort of thing. How, how involved did you want to get with the remodel? Um, well, so our bathroom remodel, we've been pretty hands on. Okay. Got it everything ourselves, rebuilt it uh, with the drywall ourselves. Yep. Um, the tile work, the, you know, taping mudding, we're probably going to contract out just because we want it to look nice. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I've never done it before, so sure, sure. I get you know, it. maybe not the best place to start. The basement bathroom is a great place to start something yes. like that, right? Yeah. Okay. That's probably what we'll do. So then let's take a look at, uh, you hire someone to restructure and then you go DIY from there. You're probably just to restructure this wall with engineers and permits and everything else with my four point load, half wall design concept you're probably gonna get it in and around the 15 to 20 range. Okay. Okay, and then to completely DIY the rest of the house, you know, the, the new kitchen and all the flooring, and then of course, ceiling issues. Yes. Now, yep. as soon as you cut a picture window in there, you're not affecting your ceiling. Okay. But you don't wanna go open concept and have a blend of stipple and knot. Definitely not, no. Have you, are you tall enough? Have you ever checked to see if that rubs off or has it been painted? It, uh, it does scrape off, so it hasn't been painted, okay. at least that we're aware of. Um, it did come off nicely in the one hole that is in the ceiling. Okay, um, right, right. So we know. So that's uh, a relatively simple. simple process then. Yeah. So you could effectively just spray a little water on there, give it five or 10 minutes, and then just scrape it all off, right? Put down a ground sheet, collect it all, walk away. Yeah age of your house, there's no asbestos issues, so you nothing to worry about. What's the plan for the house? I mean, you're just about to get married. Is this the... This is where we're no going to be. no plan to leave? Yeah, this is our uh, forever home. Okay. Should everything go well. Uh, we sort of skipped that in-between home, you know, 10 to 15 year sure, phase. Sure. Jumped right to the 30 plus year. Yeah. Um, so this is where we see ourselves raising our family and okay. retiring and going from so there. So then this is a do it once, do it right, and get everything you want so that you don't have any regrets kind of renovation. Absolutely. 
to heck with my idea because <laughs> you will regret that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> again, you know, we, we've thrown every idea out there, you know, fully open, single post, carrying, you know, on either side of the island so that we can maintain the mechanical upstairs. Yeah. Ideally, we go no post or, you know, one if it helps a little bit with the, the structural. Okay, so here's what I'm going to suggest. The, the Mac Daddy approach is going to be a steel beam that is a 2 by 10 steel beam that's going to go from one end to the other and it's going to be engineered to carry all that load with no point load in the middle. Okay. You open up the ceiling, you cut out all those floor joists in that cavity, you recess that beam right into the ceiling and then you hang all your floor joists on floor joist hangers. Okay. And you have one big smooth ceiling. Okay. Um, we have thought about that. Yes. It is only two by eight joists. Two by eight? Two by eights. Stop. So, <laughs> so oh. that would create obviously the bulkhead. Um, You're going to have which, a bump out no matter what you do. Yeah. Which we're okay with. Okay. Um, you know, because we do like that rustic look. So, you mm -hmm. know, we wrap it in the barn wood yep. sort of feel and give it a bit of character. Yeah. We're okay we, with that. You can definitely do that because yeah. you're, then you're going to need something, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So if, you, if you're going to have a beam that's going to be sticking out of the ceiling anyway, then you've got to weigh out design versus cost. Because putting a beam into, to re-support a ceiling is a lot lower cost than inserting a beam into a ceiling. Right. Right? So that's an option. So if you're looking to incorporate the design element of the beam, that's a thought. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, we've anyway. gone back and forth. On numerous occasions, what the best way is to say we don't want to limit the amount of money we throw at it, right? Because we want to do it once, do it right, yeah, yeah, like you mentioned. So, if it costs a bit more, that's what we do, okay. and we try and save by doing as much as we can ourselves, right? Which is why we watch your channel, <laughs> yes. Well, when it comes to a lot of the finishing, you'll be fine, mm -hmm. but doing the structure, you're definitely going to be hiring that out. I agree. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't need to be, uh, have the ceiling cave in on us one no. day when we're cooking dinner. I'll we, leave that we were, to the We place. were this close at the farmhouse. So I contacted the real estate agent of the area here and had a conversation with him on the way over. What is the resale value of homes that have this open concept look? And the reality is, is that in this market and with interest rates as low as it is and the expected gains in home valuation, doing this project, even if you have to pay it out entirely, is going to do nothing worse than break even at the end of the day. So my advice, what I would do if I was this homeowner, is find a way to stretch my credit limit, rob a bank, whatever it takes. Get this done before the kids are involved in the process. Because if you can get the structure done, even if you're living a little rustic for a couple of years while you do all the finishing work yourself, this is going to be an investment in return on investment and lifestyle for this family for generations. That's the goods for me. I think at the end of the day, if you want open concept, you go all in and you don't sell out and go halfway because you're going to regret it every time you turn around. Got to say, I agree with most of what you said there. So yeah. we're on the same page. Outside of robbing a bank. You yeah, know. yeah. That's, that's just, you know, me being Probably not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I would love to have a quick look at the basement. Sure. Is it finished? It's unfinished. It's yes. all open. It's a bit chaotic with stuff down there. but No, I just wanted to have a look at yeah, uh, your center line and see what they're doing. Absolutely. Because that'll make a lot of difference. Ah, uh, see, now this is perfect because when you take a look at this, the first thing you should do is realize this image right here is exactly what the minimum code for your structure for this house is. Okay. One post every 16 feet, foundation wall, foundation wall here. Now, if you were to translate this image of a beam under your floor joist and a post in the middle and put that in your kitchen, the easiest way for you to design your house is actually to just mark off with like masking tape down here where your interior walls are upstairs. Okay. And then imagine this space being upstairs. Right. Okay. And can you design around this post in this spot and make everybody happy? Probably not. Right. It sort of would sit right in the middle of the whole floor plan upstairs. So probably not ideal. Okay. So if I was to say to you, that designing a kitchen with the beam in the middle like this versus no beam 
is going to be a $20,000 decision. Is it worth it to have a designer come over and at least do a paid consultation for a couple hours and have her show you options or discuss options that could be a design feature to do a $500 or $1,000 investment to just rule that out? I think that would make complete sense right at that point uh, because if she could convince you to save the 20 you save 20 yeah if she can't convince you then you never have to think about it down the road what if we hadn't spent that 20 right you get to go to bed at night knowing you made a good decision yeah right yeah and then at least both of you are on the same page <laughs> yeah well because that... I'll tell you right now the secret of success in marriage is being on the same page <laughs> And usually it's, we are. And it's so usually that's hers. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Very All right. true. If you can find a way to incorporate a design that works, then great. But you're asking a lot of your structure, right? And if you can't, then you're going to have to go all in and get that expense done. Um, you can see the size of this beam is relative to going from here to there. Okay. When you double the distance, you almost double the steel. Right, okay. Okay, so that's kind of how you imagine it when you're looking through your process. Let's go back upstairs. Sure. We'll talk about the finishing process because you've got quite a few different flooring here. Yep. We'll get some education so you're ready for those options. And then uh, we'll wrap this up. Okay, sounds good. Brilliant. Thanks. All right, so we're on a two and a half inch cherry by the looks of it. Hardwood floor and it's a step up from the tile. Right. Not just a little bit. Like it's very strange. Yep. So when we check the grade over here, we're going to see they've got a build out. They've got plywood on the OSB and then they've got the hardwood. One, two, three. Man, they're at least half, they got at least a half inch plywood on there. And that's very strange. And it might have been just, maybe they DIY'd it. Maybe they're subject to bad advice. Because if you have hardwood and it's going in the same direction as the floor joist, then you want to add the extra layer of plywood. Right. Okay. So that you don't have the movement. But this is contrary to the floor joist. So maybe they did it because they, they, they bought cheap hardwood and they're really short pieces. So they don't transfer load as well. Okay. I don't know. That's really interesting. But it's not too often you see that the tile is actually that dramatically lower. And so now the question is, is the tile even installed properly? That is a good question. Oh my goodness. Um, you're the expert, maybe you can let us know. So the good news is, if you're gonna change the wall, and you gotta get rid of tile, and it's installed on the wrong subfloor, makes the the removal a lot easier. Okay. <laughs> so they might have done you a favor. Okay, so the, the whole point is that you have to go back to OSB on everything, right? Okay. Do you have a preference on what kind of flooring you'd wanna go through the whole house? Um, no preference. Um, for the bathroom upstairs, we went three quarter inch OSB. Okay. Just to give it a little bit more strength. Sure. I imagine, depending on the condition of this subfloor, would determine whether we change it or, or not. Well, the OSB isn't going to have to be removed. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. It'll be fine. The question is then, what kind of finished flooring are you going to go with? Okay. Right? So do you have a, we want to do hardwood through the whole main floor and then just tile at the front door? Or would you want to go luxury vinyl plank? Keep yep. that whole bulletproof kind of going to have raise a family in here. I Running in and outside, you yeah, know. Yeah, something durable, easy to clean, holds up to water since, you know, we would be redoing the kitchen. Yeah. All in one, probably the best and not have different variations and flavors. Okay, so here's the thing. Right now, even your fireplace mantle has been cut so that the wood goes underneath it. Okay. Right? If you start ripping all of this out, you're gonna have a huge gap. So it's another consideration is the expense to fix that. Right. Right? <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. Yes, thanks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you don't wanna go through the whole house and build it up an inch before you put in vinyl because you're gonna run into issues with your code at the stairs. Okay. Because now your first step will be massive going down and it'll be really shallow going up it creates tripping hazards okay so right we haven't considered so. right so this is why they they try to build everything so that there's going to be some consistency with the thickness the tile looks like it might be a little bit on the thin side do we have a heat grate we can check that out um yeah probably by the, the back door the, the back end over here 
Wow. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, you're not kidding. Boy, you don't see that very often. If I was you, because this is, you know, the whole series is all about what would I do, right? <laughs> That's what we're looking for is the advice. I'd hire myself a um, structural engineer. Okay. Uh, it's a fancy word for a guy who can tell you exactly how and what to do and put a stamp on it. So when you go to get your building permit, the city can't tell you what to do. Right. Okay. And he tells you what to do. Perfect. All they do is inspect to see if you did what he said. Because he's the engineer, he has the stamp. The only thing the city can do is tell you what to do according to all their guidelines and rules that engineers have predetermined are acceptable. Okay. It's a very small box that they work in. That's minimum code. Right. When you go to an engineer, he gets to think outside the box. As long as he says it's a good idea, nobody at the city can say otherwise. Perfect. Because his yep. stamp is assuming all the liability for that decision. Okay. Which is why whenever you have a creative problem to solve, you go to an engineer, not to the city. Okay. Because they have a very confined space that they can think in. All right. Their inspectors aren't engineers. They went to school to pass a test that says, yes, you understand minimum code requirements. We can send you out in the field and regurgitate that information everywhere. Um, so it's a different environment altogether. If you get a structural engineer, he'll come up with a plan and drawings for you to execute that structure. Now you can hire that out or do it yourself. Okay. You can actually do something this yourself, except for the fact that if you go with the steel beam, you're going to want to hire a contractor because he's going to have to call five or 10 or 15 of his friends to come and lift that sucker into place. Yeah, they're heavy beams, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> I've worked with companies that call the entire crew over and all 20 of us will lift the beam into place while they resupport the darn thing. It's a little bit weird. There are more intelligent ways to do it, but um, once you've got your structural report, you can even have them draw up option A or option B. Okay. Okay. And then that can work into your decision making process. All right. But I would really sit down and say, what's our budget? Work past the new kitchen configuration costs, new flooring costs, throw in um, some numbers for your mechanical to move all your heat and that sort of thing. You know, you're going to be using a corner. You know, you could be using this corner. Like I said, if you use a piece there, You've got a couple of feet wide running up into this bulkhead. If you were to make that bulkhead a few more inches into the room, it's not going to change the dynamics of the room. Right. Yeah. You could even add a crown molding on it, put in a couple of thin LED pot lights, make it all very intentional. Okay. And you can hide a lot of sins in those boxes. Yep. Okay. And that'll get you all of your mechanical move to where, A, it's going to be going anyway. So then that's not so bad. Okay. Once you've figured out all your costs, give or take, then you can sit down and say, does this make sense? Because right. it's real easy to say, oh, I'd love the open concept. Yep. But it comes at a price. It yeah. does. For sure. And so that's where our desire and our design desire crosses the threshold for the financial common sense. Now, in a marketplace right now, people aren't traveling. They're not doing a lot of things they used to do. And so we, we found a lot of people are finding that if they were in decent financial shape in life and they're in the right city like you are, your house valuation is going up, your expenses are going down. It, and if, if life like that doesn't bother you, you can see yourself doing that for a couple of years, taking on a big project like this, even if it took a while, not a big deal. Right. Right. So you for me, gonna, not <laughs> right for the fiance, maybe now there might be different plans there. So <laughs> yeah. you also have to take a look at your timeline. Right. All right. Yeah. Because you don't want a project to go from two months to six months to two years. Definitely not. Yeah. Right. Because that, that's a deal breaker. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay. So um, a structural engineer can come in and he can assess everything based on what's going on in the basement. He knows that this ceiling looks exactly the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he'll design everything based on that. He'll show you how to build your temporary walls, the size and the thickness of the fasteners, how many you need every so many inches. It's all detailed out really specifically. And then you can execute that plan and go without this half the kitchen for a little while. Okay. okay. All of a sudden that's not so terrible. Right. But then at some point you've got to get that restructuring passed with the city and then get into remodeling. Now, if you go with Ikea, most of the stuff's in stock, so you don't have shipping delays. Okay. Right. So you can kind of leave a lot of this stuff until this is done. 
Right. Right? Yeah. To be brutally honest, it's hard to get a contractor right now because most of their helpers are sitting at home getting paid by the government to stay there. <laughs> Not too bad for them, I guess. <laughs> <sighs> yes, we are filming this during the Serb crisis. Well, the COVID crisis. I call it the Serb crisis <laughs> because you can't hire a contractor nowadays because all of his crews are sitting at home getting paid to stay there. That's right. Why would a guy get off the couch and go to work if he's only going to make another 500 bucks a month? Ain't happening. Every contractor I called says I need six months before I can get to your house because my crew is on the sofa. Great play. I'm sure we're going to have a generation of hardworking individuals after this. <laughs> What a mess we've made of ourselves. Anyway, so uh, everybody I know is book solid, right? I mean, I can't even get eaves troughs from my house for six months. Eaves troughs. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. It's unheard of. <laughs> All right? So if you have construction friends or you know a crew or you've had people that you've been in discussion with and they're on the radar, keep them there <laughs> if you want to sure. go that direction, right? Yeah. If you were to hire a structural engineer today, he can come out and in a couple of weeks he could give you drawings which would then turn into a process of getting a permit. And you want to have all that in play while you're trying to get your contractor booked. Okay. Because it could take you a month or more to get approval for the process, but it could take you three to six to get someone in here to do it. Right. Right? Paying an engineer to do the visit and the drawings doesn't make the drawings old. That plan is good for a long time. Okay. Opening a permit, it's good for a year. And if you're not finished, you just give them a couple hundred bucks and they go away for another year. Okay. Okay. So yeah. you can start that body of work while you're trying to engage a contractor. Okay. And then as soon as you have the drawings, you can just send that to the contractor and say, give me a price to do the structural department. And then, you, you know, with all the videos, you can pull all the flooring, put some stuff in storage. Right. You got a yep. basement. You can tackle this over the winter. Yeah. That would be oh, the plan. How exciting. It. You got a wedding coming up in February. You're not doing this in the winter. Probably not until after. But. Yeah, and that's fair <laughs> enough. But at least then you can formulate a plan and have some sort of expectation, right? Because once the beam is in and you've redirected all of your heat runs and your plumbing, your mechanical is solid, the cosmetic work here, as a DIYer working on weekends, I'm going to tell you right now, you're looking six to eight months. Okay. Twice a week, it's going to take a while. Because there's going to be weekends you go, I'm just not into it. That's probably true, yeah. Right. Long week, you just want to relax. So, so. then you can have that conversation about, okay, so we, we get the beam in. Step two is redesign the kitchen. But before we do that, we have to remove all the flooring. Can't even put a single box in until you've got a, a, a slate to work on. Okay. Okay. Um, they installed all of this on top of the flooring. Looks like it, yep. So... You'll have to do the same thing. You've got to remove all of it before you remove the floor. What I would do if I was you, because I have nothing in that living room other than floor that's coming out, is I would remove all that flooring and all that stuff over there first. And I would take these base cabinets here, including your sink, and reinstall it over there, punch a hole through your floor, temporarily bring up water, and build a, a temporary kitchen over there. Okay. While you're working over here building this kitchen. Okay. Okay. That gives you life. For sure. Because you're looking at six to eight months. So then you have a kitchen. You can still entertain. You got the ability to clean this out. You roll your fridge back. You plug it in. You roll your stove back. Where's your electrical panel in this house? Uh, it's that in the basement. Far, the far corner. corner yeah. That stove can be reinstalled over in the other corner. You pull the wire down under the other side of the beam and stick it back up the wall again. Just bring it through the floor temporarily. You can reinstall your kitchen on that side while you're building it over here. Okay. And then when you're done, you can reintegrate the appliances and whatever's there just goes in the garbage and you're ready for the finished flooring. <sighs> right? Yeah. Think about wow. that. Wow. Yeah. Lots to think because about for sure. It would take you um, um, in one day, you could disassemble this and move it over there and you still That's have a right. kitchen. Yep. Now, if it takes a while to finish the project, at least there's the kitchen. Yeah, we can't eat at McDonald's uh, every day, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no, I tried, and I'm yeah. still hunting me. <laughs> All right, wow. Well, I've given you a lot to think about. Definitely. Right, yeah. DIY versus contractor. You got options, but I think at the end of the day, you're probably going to bite the bullet. And even if you have to DIY more, you're going to want to go for the full open concept. 
I can see that happening. Yeah. It's hard can, to turn that down. It right? is. It definitely is. <laughs> but like you say, all the challenges or the considerations is what's holding us back and right. you know, how we design it. So. Okay. So you eliminate all your fears and concerns by having a plan, right? Structural engineer will give you your plan. Okay. Once you have that plan, you can get it priced properly. And then you can decide how much we're going to hire out and how much we're going to do ourselves. And now you've got a plan to be able to live long term and still have a kitchen. And maybe take some of the fear out of the duration of the program. Right? I know when I did my house, we were living upstairs. I had to gut my whole main floor. So I took my kitchen, removed the bathroom, which was our second bathroom. And I rebuilt that kitchen in the bathroom. Wow, interesting. Right? Yeah. Because then we had a kitchen. And then it gave me all the space that I needed to to finish everything, right from structure to mechanical to electrical to closing to flooring, have everything finished. So that whole half the house was finished. And this half the house, it was a kitchen and a bathroom and an empty space. And I used that as my staging area. And we lived upstairs. So at least then there was a semblance of that's where I live, that's where I work, but you're not moving everything back and forth all day and living in the clutter. Yeah. Right? Definitely not. Because that, that'll get to you up here. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is definitely a mind game when you're in a major renovation. Having it clean and having it organized and having defined space to live in is key to success. All right? Can't stress that enough. <laughs> wow. And you think yeah. that, that getting married right away and having kids would be aggressive. I'll tell you right now, I'll take kids over a major renovation any day of the week in the stress meter. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately for Adam, he's only got two choices. The one choice to get it completely opened up is going to be a major engineering undertaking. <laughs> and he's gonna have to open up his wallet. The only other option he has is if he can find a way to convince his wife to allow there to be some sort of point load in the middle of that room incorporated in the kitchen design. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing down the road which way they end up going. But as in all things, when you have to make a decision, you got more than one person making that decision, I'm sure his wife is going to get exactly what she wants. <laughs> all right. Listen, if you like this video, then give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see other episodes of What Would Jeff Do, click the link up here or check the video description down below. We'll put in some of our other video options for you to check out later. We'll see you next time.